In 2009, when it came to burning away mile after mile in long distance, big displacement touring comfort, certain motorcycles came to mind. Motorcycles like the Honda Goldwing and Harley Davidson Electroglide Classic were obvious choices, but another motorcycle deserving inclusion in the conversation was the 2009 Kawasaki Vulcan 1700 Voyager, Nomad, the topic of this week's Church of Mo feature. Here, Mo's editor-in-chief Kevin Duke takes one for a spin wherein he discovers you really can take this Kawasaki from coast to coast in absolute comfort. The fact it is still in Kawasaki's product lineup, seven years on, speaks to its capabilities. Read on to get Kevin's complete thoughts on the bike, and to see more pictures of the Vulcan 1700 Voyager, be sure to check out the photo gallery. If the slumping economy's got you down, maybe it's time to pack up a motorcycle and head out for a soul-satisfying road trip. You wouldn't be alone. Despite a general downturn in motorcycle sales, the touring segment still continues to grow. You're not the only one ready for a bit of horizon chasing, as Kawasaki has its new Voyager ready for your long-haul adventures. Team K describes its new luxury touring steed as nostalgic, muscular and modern. The nostalgic aspect refers to styling elements from 1960s air vehicles, such as the driving lights, Chevy pickup, and retro tinch gauges. The Voyager is based upon the Vulcan 1700 Cruiser we recently reviewed. New from the wheels up. We were favorably impressed with the powerful and relatively nimble platform. I refer to this test because it contains a lack of info that applies to the Voyager I won't bother rehashing here, so make sure you give it a read to get the whole picture. The Vulcan's punchy 103.7 cubic inch, 50 degree V-twin gets a mild retuning for use in the Voyager. Revised AQ mapping and the use of dual exhausts, one muffler per side to minimize saddlebag intrusion, results in an identical torque peak of 108 feet to pounds but arrives 500 revolutions per minute later than the classic's 2250 revolutions per minute. Max horsepower also arrives 500 revs later than the classic, at 5000 revolutions per minute. The rev limiter kicks in at 6000 revs. Response from the slightly livelier motor is very fluid, aided as it is by an electronic throttle valve and a fuel injection system that examines throttle position, load, temperature and air pressure inputs to provide optimum delivery. It has enough low RPM twist to take off from a stop in second gear. Twin counterbalancers and overdriven fifth and sixth gears keeps vibes from the single pin crankshaft to a relaxed level. The Voyager differs most significantly from the Vulcan by its bounty of touring accoutrements. Chief among them is the large frame-mounted fairing that not only provides major leak wind protection but also a receptacle for a cornucopia of infotainment features. Center stage is an LCD panel that hosts readouts for average fuel economy, range to empty, a gear position indicator, a clock and twin trimmers that can be toggled through via a switch on the left handlebar. A fuel gauge and speedometer reside to the left, and a tachometer and engine temperature gauge are on the right. Below the main gauges is the audio panel for AM, FM and weather bands plus the ability to handle optional XM radio, CB and iPod inputs. Switches on the left handlebar control the system. An iPod jack in the left side lockable glove box is optional. Sound quality through the two speakers is decent if not excellent. Another touring feature of the Voyager is electronic cruise control that functions in gears 3 to 6 between 30 and 85 miles per hour speeds can be bumped up or down incrementally, 1 mile per hour, claimed, with a handlebar mount controls, and cruise can be cancelled with brake and clutch input, or by closing the throttle manually. Self-canceling turn signals are standard on all V17 models. The Voyager is also equipped with a 12-volt accessory socket. When it's time to hit the road for a week or a month, 
You'll need places to stow clothes, cameras, refreshments and perhaps a copy of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. To that end, the Voyager has a pair of lockable saddlebags that hold 38 liters each and are sealed from the elements. The top opening design uses a simple squeeze handle for effortless opening and closing, and they can be left unlocked for quick retrieval of stored items. Dual latches are used for extra security. Even more commodious is a 50-liter top box that is big enough to hold two full-face helmets. Like the saddlebags, its locks are key to the ignition. Dual lockable glove boxes offer cockpit accessible storage space. With all these amenities and a big cube motor, it shouldn't be a surprise to see it all add up to a considerable 886-pound ready-to-ride curb weight, which is less than some other large touring bikes. What is a surprise is how non-cumbersome the big rig is. Even low-speed maneuvers where some other Luxo barges struggle aren't problematic for the Voyager, thanks in part to a reasonable wheelbase of 65.6 inches and modestly sized 130-90 and 170-70 tires on 16-inch aluminum wheels.